Hey there, I'm Safina and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything you need to know to get out on the trail and do it safely. So if that is something that you need to know, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can join the fun. We have new videos every Thursday. I'm here with Healy today. Healy, come. Come over. Come over. Mwah. I'm here with Healy today. We're going on a day hike. So we thought it would be a good chance to talk about what you need to be bringing in your day pack for a short hike. So between two to eight miles. Um, yeah, let's get into it. A few things you wanna consider is going to be the weather that you might encounter out on the trail, um, the intensity of the trail, so that you can kind of uh, adjust what you put in your day pack. But we're gonna tell you what's in our day pack for today, and uh, let's get started. So the first thing in my day pack, um, probably the most important, is going to be my water. And the amount of water that you bring on a hike is going to depend on a few different things. So for instance, the intensity of your hike, the distance of your hike, uh, the weather. So is it really, really hot? Um, which is more considerations than we're gonna go into today. But if you're interested in testing how much water you're losing while you're hiking and the different considerations, for keeping yourself hydrated, then you can go ahead and hit subscribe because I'm coming out with that video soon. Um, but as a rule of thumb, you want to be drinking 500 mils or 16.9 ounces of water every hour. So that's one full bottle of water every hour. And you do wanna be sipping the water over the hour, not just kind of chugging all at once. So that's why I really like these hydration packs because they go into your bag and then they have this hose and mouthpiece that uh, drape over your arm so that you can be sipping throughout the hike. And I find that when I'm using a water bottle and I have to stop, take my backpack off, take the water bottle out, I just don't drink enough water during the hike. So this really helps me stay hydrated. But if you wanna use a water bottle, that's totally fine. Um, but try to keep it somewhere where it's accessible so that you can kind of reach back into your bag and take a few sips every once in a while. Um, that'll help you stay hydrated. The second thing in my bag, maybe the second most important, are my snacks. So on a short hike, two to eight miles, you really don't need snacks, but it's always nice to stop, enjoy the view, and munch on a little snack. Um, when you get into the longer hikes and you're losing a lot of sodium um, in your sweat, you wanna be able to replenish that, and snacks are going to help with that. Um, the sodium is going to help you absorb the water that you're drinking more efficiently. So that's why it's more, more important when you're on a, a longer hike. Since this is a short hike, um, I'm not gonna bring a lot of first aid things because help is pretty nearby. You're never more than probably four miles away from your car. Um, so I'm not too worried. Um, so I have you know, some band-aids, some alcohol wipes to you know, clean up any cuts, or if I start to feel like I'm getting a blister, I can put a band-aid on it. I also bring um, the foam pre-wraps and then tape so that if I sprain my ankle, which is more of what I'm worried about, if I sprain my ankle, then I can wrap my ankle up and hopefully um, be able to make it back to the car by myself. But those wraps kind of walked off with one of my friends after a hike. Uh, Drew, I'm looking at you. <laughs> so I need to buy more of those so I can put them in my pack. For weather protection, it's gonna kind of depend on where you're hiking and what the weather is going to be. So for instance, today when we go hiking, you know, it's sunny out, so I want to have some sun protection. So I always wear a hat um, and, oh my God. I always wear my hat and uh, sunglasses to protect my eyes. I'm always wearing long sleeve and long pants or leggings to protect my skin. And then any exposed areas, then I'm putting some block on them um, before we leave for the hike, but I don't really reapply while we're out there since it's a short hike. Um, the best thing that you can do to prevent skin cancer is to limit your exposure to the sun and protect your skin from the sun. So the most intense UV rays of the day are between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. here in the United States, which of course are prime hiking hours. So you really wanna make sure that you're protecting your skin. Additionally, I'm bringing some 
warm layers because where I'm going, it can get pretty chilly. Um, so depending on you know where you're going, if it's gonna be, if it can get very cold, then you'll wanna bring additional layers. Um, or if there's the potential for rain, then you'll wanna bring some rain gear. So beyond protection from the sun and the weather, you also want to protect yourself against animals. And here in California, we have bears and mountain lions. And very recently, there's been multiple mountain lion sightings down in Pacifica, where I, I like to hike pretty often. Um, so if I ever encounter a mountain lion on the trail, then I definitely want to have some way of protecting and defending myself. So I bring my bear spray. Um, also, this little siren. So these are the two kind of protection devices that I have or safety devices that I have. The bear spray, of course, is to fend off animals. So as the animals are charging, you're going to kind of spray the bear spray in front of you in a sweeping motion so that as they run through the spray or as they approach the spray, then it gets in their um, eyes and they breathe it in. So you can think of it as a really strong pepper spray um, to deter animals. And this siren could be used to scare away animals because it's 130 decibels, which is supposed to be equivalent to a jet taking off, so loud. Um, but I think of it more for if something happens, it'll help me signal for help because it is super loud. Um, here, let me give you a little preview. Oh my God, so loud. You also don't wanna get lost while you're hiking. So it's a good idea to get a map, whether it's a printed version or a map that you downloaded offline onto your phone. Um, I find that the printed versions of the map, kind of depending on which park you're going to, aren't super accurate, or at least they don't have all of the trails marked on the map that are actually out there. So when you come to a crossroads, it's really difficult to determine which trail you're supposed to be on. Um, so I also download the maps from all trails so that when I'm out there, I can use my phone's GPS and just make sure that I'm on the right trail. And these last few things are gonna go pretty quickly. So if you don't finish your hike in a timely manner and you're out there hiking in the dark, it's always good to have a flashlight or a headlamp handy to help you get back to your car safely. Um, uh, chapstick, probably the most underrated thing in my bag, but if I hike without it, I am always, always so sad after because my lips are so chapped. You know, you're sweating, I'm licking my lips because they're all salty, and then be before you know it, your lips are all chapped. <laughs> so definitely chapstick. So it's chapstick for me, but what about you? What is that one thing that you hate hiking without? Let us know down in the comments. Hand sanitizer, you know, before you eat your snacks or if you have to go to the bathroom out there, then you can wash your hands. And binoculars. So this is my number one entertainment item that I bring on my hiking track, my hiking trips and my backpacking trips. This is just like a cheap $20 binoculars from our glacier trip, but they actually worked pretty well, uh, to be honest. I got to see some mountain goats you can get a nicer pair for sure. I have a nicer pair, but this is the one I take hiking. I just like to sit, um, look at the views, kind of check things out. Maybe I see some animals, maybe I see some people. Yeah, it's just fun. Come here. Hi. Hi. And since I hike with Healy a lot, um, I also wanted to show you the five things that I bring in my bag for her. So I bring her uh, a water bowl, so it's a collapsible water bowl for her to drink out of. Um, and I also bring her water separately from my own. I bring training treats. So there's a bag of treats in here and it attaches to my waist belt. Um, and this is so that, you know, if we encounter any dogs on the trail, I can reward her for good behavior or distract her if she seems like a little antsy when other dogs are coming up. Her poop bags, of course, because I want to be able to bag her poop and take it out um, of the area and dispose of it properly. 
what else? Oh, and then the last thing is her doggy boots. So um, I bring these on all of our hiking trips now, even if I don't think that we're gonna need it because when we took her on her first backpacking trip um, to Desolation Wilderness, she hurt her paw and then we had to MacGyver a dog boot out of Eric's camping shoe so that she could make the hike out. Um, so that was pretty stressful. So we bought her some um, doggy hiking boots and kind of just bring them. And if we come across any terrain that might be rough on her feet, then we just stop, put them on, make sure that she's gonna be okay. Yep, and that's it for this video. Again, this is for short hikes where you're never more than four miles away from your car. Um, if you are doing longer hikes or hiking in really remote areas where help is not so close by, then you'll wanna bring some additional things. All right, if you liked this video, like and subscribe. And until next time, we'll see you on the trail. Haley, come here. Look at that.